Beneath the endless sand dunes of the Sahara, scientists have made a discovery that could completely overturn our understanding of human history. What they found there had been hidden under meters of sand for thousands of years. And now we may have to rewrite the textbooks on ancient civilizations. Stay tuned to find out exactly what lies beneath the largest desert in the world. Welcome everyone. When you think of the Sahara, you usually only have images of barren sand dunes in your head. A hostile, desolate landscape as far as the eye can see. Let me know if you've ever been to the Sahara. A few years ago, I was in Morocco in Warzazadi on the edge of the Sahara, known for its film studios. Scenes for Game of Thrones, Gladiator and The Mummy were filmed there. And if you find this desert as exciting as I do, then why not subscribe now so you never miss out on new insights and help me out at the same time. And for those who have already subscribed, giving the video a thumbs up really helps. Maybe we'll even hit 5,000 likes. Thanks everyone. Yes, what most people don't know is that the Sahara wasn't always the barren wasteland we know today. On the contrary, not all that long ago, this region was a green paradise. Starting around 14,000 years ago and lasting until around 5,000 years ago, North Africa experienced a wet period known as the African Humid Period. During this time, the Sahara was dotted with rivers, lakes, grasslands, and even forests. Elephants, giraffes, and antelopes, all these animals roamed a region that is now one of the most hostile places on Earth. But what is even more spectacular is that people lived there. And not just a few isolated nomads, but well-organized societies with agriculture, livestock breeding, and complex social structures. Archaeological finds such as the famous rock paintings on the Tasselin Najer Plateau in Algeria depict hunting scenes, herds of cattle, and even fishing activities. All of this would be unthinkable in today's Sahara. But the truly crazy thing is, this green Sahara didn't disappear slowly over thousands of years. No, it flipped within just a few centuries. Scientists refer to this as rapid desertification. The slow shift of the Earth's axis, known as precession, reduced the amount of sunlight reaching North Africa, which weakened the monsoon system. Less rain meant less vegetation, and less vegetation meant more sunlight was reflected, which in turn further reduced rainfall, a fatal feedback loop. A paradise that had existed for 9,000 years was transformed within just a few generations into the inhospitable desert we know today. And here's where it gets really interesting. The collapse of the Green Sahara coincides almost perfectly with the sudden rise of ancient Egypt. That's strange because normally civilizations arise from abundance, not from sand everywhere. I don't like sand. It's coarse and rough and irritating, and it gets everywhere. But what if ancient Egypt was not the beginning, but the continuation? What if the people who once lived in the Green Sahara were forced to migrate to the last remaining green strip, the Nile? Could it be that the founders of Egypt were the survivors of a lost culture that flourished during the Golden Age of the Sahara? The ancient Egyptians provided some clues about the time before them. They did not see themselves as the beginning, but as the heirs of something older. Three important ancient texts the King List of Abydos, the Turin King List, and the Palermo Stone date back not just a few centuries, but according to some interpretations, more than 30,000 years into the past. However, most historians do not entirely believe them and divide these lists into historical and mythical rulers. The ancient Egyptians themselves probably didn't make this distinction. For them, it was all a continuous record of their past. But okay, whether you believe these records or not, there is new and astonishing evidence that a lost world lies buried beneath the sands of the Sahara. Genetic studies show that early North African populations were a mixture of Sub-Saharan, African, and Middle Eastern ancestry. As a study by the Max Planck Institute for Geoanthropology states, ancient DNA from sites such as Tafarolt in Morocco, which is 15,000 years old, reveals a surprising mixture of Sub-Saharan African and Near Eastern ancestors, suggesting long-distance contacts across the then habitable Sahara. In other words, when the Sahara was green, there was already contact between different regions across very long distances. This points to organized societies that traded and interacted with each other. And when the Sahara dried up, these people may have migrated to where the Egyptian empire later arose. But the truly breathtaking discovery lies literally beneath the sand. Modern satellite and radar technologies have revealed something astonishing beneath the sand dunes of the Sahara. Beneath the western desert runs the fossilized bed of an ancient, long-dried-up river known as the Tamanrasset River. 
During the African humid period, around 10,000 years ago, this mighty river carried water from the southern foothills of the Atlas Mountains, across what is now the Sahara, all the way to the Atlantic Ocean. Researchers believe that the Taman Raset was once one of the largest rivers in North Africa, comparable to today's Niger River, and an entire network of tributaries fed into it. Its vast waters could have enabled fertile plains, lush vegetation, and even early human settlements along its course. Today, this river is buried under hundreds of meters of sand, but radar signals from space still trace its ancient riverbed like a scar on the Earth's crust, reminding us that even the world's largest desert was once teeming with life. A river of this magnitude would have provided enough water to sustain great civilizations, and we know that people lived there because archaeologists have found the remains of prehistoric settlements and tools that once belonged to thriving trading centers. In the central Sahara, in regions such as Tassili, Fetsan, and Mesak, archaeologists have discovered stone burial mounds that are up to 9,000 years old. Some are circular or consist of concentric stone walls, while others resemble primitive pyramid shapes. In these graves, researchers found human remains buried with tools, shell jewelry, and red pigments made from ochre. Clear evidence of ritual practices and social differences within the society of that time. Especially in Fetsan in southern Libya and on the Mesak Plateau, many finds date from 6000 to 4000 BC, while others, such as in the Urmogiak area, are even more recent and extend into the early Garamantian period, around 500 BC. Such burials show that long before the rise of the great river civilizations in Egypt or Mesopotamia, complex societies with spiritual beliefs and social structures existed in the middle of the Sahara. In the area of today's Niger Basin, archaeologists made one of the most fascinating discoveries in the entire history of Sahara research, the Gobero site. It is located on the edge of a former lake that existed during the African wet period, a time when the Sahara was crisscrossed by rivers and grasslands. Around 9,000 to 4,500 500 years ago, communities lived here that could truly be described as an aquatic culture. In Gobero, researchers found organized cemeteries with dozens of carefully constructed graves in which the dead were often sprinkled with red ochre and buried with shell jewelry, beads, and tools. Some skeletons were arranged in ritualistic poses. These finds point to a complex spiritual belief system and a clear social structure. And the inhabitants of Gobero were skilled fishermen and boat builders, as archaeologists found remains of harpoons, fishing hooks, and watercraft, which shows that the people had perfectly adapted to life on large inland bodies of water. Radiocarbon dating places the oldest traces at around 8000 BC. This makes Gobero one of the oldest known cemeteries in this region. All these findings impressively reveal that the Green Sahara was not just an intermediate phase of nature, but the home of highly organized cultures that flourished in the midst of an area that is now a hostile desert long before the rise of ancient Egypt. And we have barely scratched the surface of this vast desert. Due to its sheer size, over 9 million square kilometers, only a tiny fraction of the Sahara has been archaeologically surveyed, let alone excavated. Some estimates suggest that less than 1% of the Sahara has been properly explored using modern archaeological methods, simply because it is hot, remote, politically unstable in some areas, and simply overwhelmingly large. But beneath all that sand could lie entire chapters of human history that we have never seen. Stone structures, cities, even inscriptions, all preserved but hidden. And as long as we don't look for it, we'll never find out. But I'll keep you updated on all new findings here on the channel. So don't forget to subscribe now and please give this video a thumbs up so we can hit 5,000 likes. Let's move from the hot desert of North Africa to the ice-cold Alps. A dramatic situation is currently unfolding here. The Hochvogel in the Allgäu Alps is on the verge of collapse. A violent rock slide is imminent. Let's take a closer look. Just click on the video displayed in the top right-hand corner. As always, you'll find another video about science and space at the bottom right. Otherwise, I'd say see you in the next video. Take care, everyone.